It means it says, Victor Grabinikov, my world. Okay. I'm not showing off. I just know what it means. <laughs> okay. I have a contact in Russia named Ulaine. And in roughly 1999, he sent me a URL about this Russian scientist uh, and a flying platform. And I, I, I went and looked at it. This is the cover off of the book, which I managed to get from Russia. So <laughs> all in Russian. Uh, Grubinikov discovered something called a cavity structural effect. And it's basically what we're talking about with tubes and the uh, frequencies that cancel themselves. And also they interact with biological and also physical material. Oh, by the way, Grubinikov says there are the two most common materials in this world are cellulose, because it doesn't decay, and chitin. Chitin is spelled C-H-I-T-I-N. That's what all insects are made out of, chitin. It's the shells, the body. Beetles, roaches, butterflies, everything's made out of cotton, and it doesn't dissolve and it doesn't die. So all the dust in your house, that's billion-year-old bugs that are still grumbled and falling. <laughs> but what's interesting about cotton and cotton is dielectric. The Casimir plates are dielectric. They repel electricity. These nanostructure arrays, when you look at them under a microscope, this is what they look like. This is excreted by the bug in growing its tissues, you know, the, the cotton. That's what it looks like as you, as you go significantly greater magnifications. That's what you see, finer and finer. Look like it's machined. It's almost perfect. Go to the next one, please. This is even a finer magnification. And these are those little resonating cavities that appear to pick up. The lower you go, the higher frequencies, like a straw with a certain frequency, like organ pipes. As the organ pipes change in, in, in length, the frequency goes up. So the deeper you go into mass with these resonating structures, eventually you're going to hit Cater's frequency below infrared terahertz, and you would be able to cancel gravity. So this, that's what all this is leading to, part of it. He, the original experiment, he's looking at a microscope. This one particular bug, he won't tell us if it's a beetle, uh, a, uh, uh, a beetle or a butterfly or some kind of a wasp. He won't, won't tell the genus of the insect. But he claims he, he had, he had uh, was looking at one little piece of it, a concave, you know, concave, it looks like a, a satellite dish. And he's looking at that under a microscope. It's a chitin plate, chitin, C-H-I-T-I-N. He's looking at it under a microscope, looking at this extremely precise uh, nanostructure array. Well, this, he, this is an electron microscope. But in this one, he's looking at these star shapes all on these concave plates. And he happened to take a pair of tweezers, and, and he had another one like this, and he dragged it across, and it jumped out of the tweezers and fluttered up in the air and fell off to the side. So he thought, I've been working too long. <laughs> so he takes it out from under the microscope. He does it again, and it floats up out of the air <laughs> and floats back down. So he goes out and kills a bunch of these bugs and rips off their wings, <laughs> and he glues them all to this board, da -da -da -da, like a grid, 10 by 10, something like that. And he sets it where all the cups are facing up, and he drops an ink pen on it, and the ink pen floats in the air. <laughs> he drops a tack on it, and the tack floats in the air. He turns the board upside down, and the board floats in the air. It's like, whoa. <laughs> so, uh, and it all sounds like BS, but remember, fluctuations, zero-point energy, and training, the whole bit. Okay, um, he said, the detail broke loose from my tweezers. It hung suspended in the air, and then it fell back. He t ties these panels together, and he makes these panel blocks made out of cotton. Okay. So they're basically little repelling blocks. Okay. Uh, array levitation of pin, tack, and other objects. He says, I'm not naming the class to which this insect belongs. It seems on the verge of extinction. He's a big tree hugger. I have no problem with tree huggers. But uh, he's... He, you know, you got to protect as much as you can. And he, he doesn't want to give the name of this because he thinks if this gets out to the world, they'll come in and take every bug they can. I wrote him a letter, and I said, look, we don't care about the name of the bug. Just send us a two, couple of samples. If we can duplicate the effect, prove it's not electrostatic, it's not electromagnetic, we can make artificial, just, uh, you know, analyze it with an acoustic microscope, I mean, a scanning microscope, get the specific dimension. Is it hexagonal, you know, tet tetragon, tetragon what? And make it into an array. What is the structure, the size? Is it on angstroms, micrometers, what? And just run off sheets of this stuff. So if you, you made a pair of coveralls of this stuff, you'd float in the air like a big balloon. <laughs> so, oh, it gets better. <laughs> so, this is Grabinikov holding uh, what all this led to. It looks like a, he's an artist. So he goes out in the country and he takes his paints and stuff. This is like an artist set and it folds up, you know. So normally it unfolds and it's got all the palettes and all. Uh, next one, please. So he basically has hand grips. He's got a left hand grip and a right hand grip. Clutch cables. Like a motorcycle. And notice he's got little wing nuts to attach them all. Next one, please. This fits on top of this, and that fits onto the board when it's un unpopped, when it's un the hinges are open. And it's all wing nutted together. No, notice, no batteries, no light, no nothing. It's just natural. This box is hollow underneath, by the way. Next one, please. 
This is, uh, Professor Grubinikoff, this is the actual stand, what it looks like. So you stand on this thing, and you turn these clutch cables. Next one, please. <laughs> this is Professor Grubinikoff standing on this machine, and notice the shadow is directly on the ground. Next one, please. And this is when he's floating off the air, in the air, from these wing structures off these bugs. Totally natural effect. No electricity, no nothing. This is the underside of the platform from the book. Now, if you notice, uh, in the upper, uh, he, he stylizes it with, it doesn't glow and have colors and all like that. But, Tuck, can you pull this piece here? Uh, no, right where your hand is. Move that in the center, please. Okay. You notice all those little veins? Okay. And, and he, he, said, he said, I'm right about this. So, uh, in each corner of the box, he went out and he got popsicle sticks, flat popsicle sticks, and he glues 10 of these little cups on top of the popsicle stick. And he's got all these sticks lined up with a common rod, so when he opens it, he's got a Japanese fan. That's what those fans are. In the back, there's, uh, next one, please. In the, in the, there's the cups, there's the, the popsicle stick, there's the rod holding all the sticks together to form the fan. There's the four fans in the corner of these, this hollow box. One set of clutch, one clutch cable controls the two in the front. The uh, clutch cable on the other side controls the two in the back. When he opens the clutch cable simultaneously, he gets equal lift and he floats up off the ground. If he wants to go, he goes up to 1,000 feet. With the amount of uh, cups he's got and the repulsion ability they have, he can only go to 1,000 feet. He says he, his fastest he's ever gone, 920 miles an hour. And he, <laughs> it's not a translation error. He, he says... When he's flying, that there's like an energy grid around him. Now, I don't know if you know much about levitation reports and stuff, but John Keeley said when he flew his flying machine that he went, floated up in the air, flew 500 miles an hour, came back, not a hair on his head was must. It's like an energy bubble around him. Why? Because gravity's been repelled away from you. Therefore, wind and everything else has been repelled away from you. So it, it's po quite possible he could do this. And you say, well, all he can do is go up. How does he go forward? Well... He turns, half turns one of the clutch cables, so the two fans in the front are half closed, and that causes him to tilt forward, and he flies forward. That's how he goes. And when he, he flies it like a surfboard. So Now, you want to ride something like that? It's out in the parking lot. <laughs> okay. Now, the next one, please. When he's on this thing, he's, it's invisible. It's not totally invisible, but if you look up, you see a, a real thin blur. You wouldn't know what it was. Why? Because gravity is, it entrains the light, and it's like a... It goes around the ship and, or around the machine and recombines at the bottom. So when you look up, he's completely invisible. That's what he says. Uh, oh, he said, the speed of my flight is quite high. There is no wind in my ears. The platform's force field has carved out from space an upward diverging invisible column that cuts the platform off from the Earth's gravitational field. But it left me and the air column intact. I think that all this, as it were, are parts, uh, are parts of space in flight, and then it closes, uh, it parts space when he flies through it, and the space closes when he goes past that area. Uh, as far as speed and height, he says, my Gravito platform is a homemade device uh, capable of devel developing the zenithal pull of at least 100 grams, which equates to 220 pounds. That's how much lift does he have. He can lift 220 pounds with this machine with the number of cups that he has attached to it in this fan configuration. He says the horizontal speed of uh, 30 to 40 kilometers a minute, which translates to 24 miles a minute. He says, uh, I never fly faster than 25 kilometers a minute, which is uh, nine, uh, maximum 930 miles an hour, preferring to go 10 times slower, which is roughly 93 miles an hour. That's what he writes. He says, I'm, I'm flying about 300 meters, which is 984 feet, so he can go maximum of 1,000 feet above the ground based on the lift of this machine. Okay, now the spooky stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the really spooky stuff. I, I, this is nothing. This is nothing. Okay, think about it. In relativity, they say that the, the more gravity that flows into a mass, the uh, slower the time. Okay, when this guy leaves, he gets on his machine. He looks at his watch. It says 8 o'clock. He looks at the kitchen clock. It says 8 o'clock. He goes around flying. He looks at his watch. It says 9 o'clock. He lands. He goes into the kitchen. It says 10 o'clock. His watch says 9 o'clock. Kitchen says 10 o'clock. When you go out into space, you don't age at light speed. So, but, and why? Because there's no gravity in space. You don't age. So and he said when he's in a reduced gravity environment, which is what this machine, he's inside this bubble, so he's moving at a much slower time because he has much less gravity. So every planet with its weight has a different time scale based on the gravity determined. Keeley used to say time is gravity, so always.